This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman as we go to Mexico, where prominent news anchor Azucena Uresti took to the airwaves to stand up to one of the country's most powerful drug cartels. Earlier this week, the Jalisco New Generation cartel posted a video online in which they directly threatened Uresti, an anchor for the outlet Millennio TV and a radio broadcast for Radio Formula who regularly reports on cartel violence and organized crime in Mexico. In the video, a man told Oresti, quote, I assure you that wherever you are, I will find you, and I will make you eat your words, even if they accuse me of femicide. The blurry video, which was posted on Twitter by an anonymous user, shows mass men carrying automatic rifles and other firearms. Oresti addressed the threats during her broadcast Monday night. I have joined the federal system of protection from the government. I repeat, our work will continue to be based on the truth and with the intention of providing information on the reality of a country like ours. And also, as has happened on other occasions, I express my solidarity and support to hundreds of colleagues who are still threatened or who have had to leave their areas, but who keep on showing the value of information and their love for this profession. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador vowed to protect Uresti. I completely reject these threats. We don't accept this sort of behavior. We are going to protect Azucena, and we are going to protect all Mexicans. It is our responsibility. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, Mexico is the most dangerous country for journalists in the Western Hemisphere. Some 120 journalists have been killed in Mexico since 2000, with at least four murdered this year alone. Well, for more, we go to Mexico City, where we're joined by Jan Albert Hutzen, Dutch journalist and Mexico correspondent at the Committee to Protect Journalists. Um, Jan, thanks, Jan Albert, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, why don't you start off by talking about this situation of Oresti, remarkably brave, after this death threat comes in, for her to go on the air uh, and challenge the cartel, not only in her name, but in the name of all Mexican journalists trying to do their work on the ground. Absolutely. Uh, we believe the threat actually originated in an interview that she did on Radio Formula with a member of a citizen militia uh, in the state of Michoacán, where the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel is currently embroiled in uh, uh, sort of gangland warfare over territory in uh, a traditionally very violent area in Mexico. And uh, I think it's it's been a very clear message from the cartel that they want to manipulate and influence public opinion. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a low-intensity civil con conflict. Uh, it's war for them. It's a war against other criminal groups and against the state in Mexico. And with that comes a kind of information warfare. So uh, they were very clearly not, uh, not happy with the way certain uh, news outlets, certain national news outlets, were extensively covering the conflict, as Azucena had been doing for over the past few months. And uh, they're trying to manipulate that. They're trying to change it. Uh, they're trying to strike terror in the hearts of Mexican reporters. And uh, that's the uh, that's sort of the goal of the video. They obviously knew that it was going to go viral. They obviously knew that Mexican outlets were going to uh, reproduce the video and uh, make the message spread across the country like wildfire. Uh, and that's what happened ultimately. So. She has said in her statement on the air that she's under federal protection. What does that mean? And what about the significance of AMLO, of the Mexican president speaking out? So when she says she is under federal protection, it essentially means that she has been incorporated into an agency of the federal government called the, uh, the Federal Mechanism for the Protection of Human Rights Defenders and Journalists. And it's uh, an agency that coordinates uh, protective measures organized by the federal government anywhere in the country. Uh, and it might, it might range from getting a panic button uh, or getting uh, a bulletproof vest, uh, a camera installation at her, at her home, uh, et cetera. So th there's a whole catalog of protective measures that the government is able to provide. Some of them are a little bit more effective. Some of them are a little bit less. And it means that she will probably has uh, some. She'll have to limit her movements a little bit. She'll have to uh, to, uh, to check in with the federal authorities every once in a while. 
And it also means that the federal government will need to see uh, what they can do further to investigate this threat, because ultimately um, it, the, the threat stems from Jalisco or from Michoacan. These are states in the center of Mexico. Uh, they, they'll have to investigate and see what they can do about that, because obviously protective measures can only go so far. So can you tell us what Azucena Oresti was actually investigating um, as this threat came in, uh, and then put it in the context uh, overall? Um, in June, one of the murderers of Mexican journalist Javier Valdez was sentenced to 32 years in prison. He was murdered in 2017. Uh, his colleague, uh, Miroslava Breach, was assassinated just two months before him. Um, uh, I want to play a clip of Valdez. Valdez speaking at the International Press Freedom Award from the, your organization, the Committee to Protect Journalists, in 2011, New York. And then you can tell us each of their stories. He sido periodista estos 21 años y nunca. I have been a journalist these past 21 years, and never before have I suffered or enjoyed it this intensely, nor with so many dangers. In Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico. In Culiacán, in the state of Sinaloa, Mexico, it is dangerous to be alive, and to do journalism is to tread an invisible line drawn by the bad guys who are in drug trafficking and in the government in a field strewn with explosives. Esta es una guerra, sí. This is a war, yes, but one for control by the narcos. But we, the citizens, are providing the deaths, and the Mexican and U.S. governments the guns. And they, the eminent, invisible, and hidden ones, within and outside of the governments, they take the profits. So that's Mexican journalist Javier Valdez, uh, before he was murdered. Um, now, one of the murderers was sentenced to 32 years in prison. But how rare is that even to find someone who has killed a journalist and give us all the numbers? Sure thing. Uh, circling back to your first question, uh, broadly speaking, Azucena Oresti and Milenio Televisión and uh, her radio show on Radio Formula were uh, covering a conflict in a specific area of Michoacán, in the center of Mexico, where a number of organized crime groups have united to fight back against an incursion of the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel. And uh, particularly, uh, what may have set this this threat off was an interview that she did with a member of one of those uh, one of those self self uh, declared. Um, self-defense groups in the area uh, where the person who she was speaking with was using relatively strong language in reference to the leader of the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel. There might have been a little bit of ego involved there, but it's, it appears to be the one issue that, it's, that set this all off. And, you know, in the broader context, as you mentioned, Mexico is the most dangerous country for journalists in the Western Hemisphere. It has been so for a very long time. Uh, more than 120 journalists have been murdered since CPJ started taking numbers, started gathering statistics on uh, violence against the press in 1992. More than 95% of these murders linger in impunity. It's very rare, actually, for Mexican authorities to even arrest someone in crimes against the press, let alone sentence them. So what happened in the cases of Javier Valdez and Miroslav Abriz was relatively rare. And it really only happened because the Mexican state invested uh, a relative large number of resources and a lot of time in investigating these murders because it was a PR problem for them, really. They couldn't really stand back and, and not do anything. And both Javier Valdez and Miroslava Breach uh, were correspondents for the newspaper of La Jornada, which is a newspaper, uh, a progressive one based in Mexico City. Uh, Javier Valdez was also the co-founder of a weekly magazine called Rio Doce uh, in the city of Culiacán in the northern state of Sinaloa. He was well known for writing columns about organized crime and especially about human rights and about how it's really like for people in Sinaloa to live in the shadow of drug trafficking groups. In the case of Miroslava Bridge, she was a correspondent for La Jornada in the northern state of Chihuahua, and she was widely known in Mexico for investigating the ties between local criminal groups in Chihuahua and political parties. So and both of them were in reality killed because they angered uh, specific criminal groups. In the case of Javier Valdez, it was a group belonging to the Sinaloa cartel. In the case of uh, Miroslava 
Cava Brita was another group belonging to the Sinaloa cartel that was active in, in Chihuahua. So they were, they were both killed because of that. And uh, to give you another idea of what the situation is like in Mexico, after their murders in 2017, four years ago, uh, between 30 and 40 reporters uh, were killed in Mexico. Most of them have never been—most of those murders have never actually been solved. How can they best be protected, Jan Albert? That's a very good question. And the best way for them to protect them is it's sort of like a two-pronged solution. One of them is the Mexican government should actually vastly expand the, the existing protective mechanisms that they have. They should, in, they should better train the people uh, focused on human rights in their government and uh, coordinating these protective measures. That in itself is, is quite a task because the Mexican government has actually never done so adequately. But the other one, and that's incredibly important, is they should fight impunity, because ultimately the best way to protect journalists is by preventing these things from ever happening. And the best way from preventing these things from ever happening is by fighting back, by or, uh, arresting people, by letting these criminals know that if they actually do kill a, a journalist, they're going to get caught and they're going to go to jail. Because impunity is what keeps incentivizing this. But unfortunately, neither of those things is done uh, sufficiently by the Mexican government. Jan Albert Hudson, I want to thank you so much for being with us, Dutch journalist, Mexico correspondent at the Committee to Protect Journalists, speaking to us from Mexico City. Coming up, we speak to health care activist Adi Barkin about fighting for Medicare for all after ALS has left him paralyzed and without use of his voice. A new documentary about his life is premiering this weekend called Not Going Quietly. Stay with us.